Evacuating Yellowstone on June 13th, we were unaware to the extent of the damage to the park's northern entrances. It wasn't until later in the evening when local news channels began showing videos taken by a National Park Service helicopter. It was crazy. Whole sections of the park's north entrance road alongside the Gartner River were gone. And the road running alongside Soda Butte Creek at the park's northeast entrance didn't fare much better. We heard the Firehole River eventually flooded the road we had driven on and an unnerving roller coaster dip to the road we drove over in an area aptly named Sliding Meadows south of Canyon Village not surprisingly collapsed a few days later. We also learned the Madison River started to erode our evacuation route. My guess is it was probably this area shown in our video. With reality setting in, we now needed a change in plans. Well, hello, West Yellowstone. <laughs> yeah, here we go, tourist land. Tourist land, yay. It's probably where the, everyone that's been evacuated has probably been going. Um, Yellowstone Park Village. Yeah, we decided not to try to get uh, lodging here because so many people are being evacuated from the park. This is gonna be like everyone's first stop. <laughs> So we are continuing on into Idaho. All three bear lodge looks cute. Yeah, no, oh. I know it is cute. There's, there's a lot of a lot cute of things here. Cute. We only got one night at this other place, so we, we can uh, try to change things up. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Bye bye. With Yellowstone in the rearview mirror, we headed south into Idaho along Route 20. My daughter Megan and I had planned to fish Henry's Fork of the Snake River, so. We moved up our schedule to include fly fishing Harriman Ranch on opening day, June 15th. It's sort of the fly fisherman equivalent of a mountain man gathering. Leaving us with tomorrow, and for Megan that translated to checking out the Grizzly and Wolf Discovery Center, as well as shopping for souvenirs in West Yellowstone. Megan had been hoping to wake up in a tent covered in snow this morning in Yellowstone. So we got part of the wish. Well, it's June 14th. It's the 14th. Megan? Yeah, it's June 14th and a hail. <laughs> starting in the flood. Since it was cold and snowing, our new plan to spend the morning in West Yellowstone made sense. We turned the car around and headed back up north. You can see the clouds yeah. and how low they are by just looking at these hills and mountains to our side. Or how high we are. <laughs> True. Because of the uh, elevation. It looks so weird. So see, Henry's look, 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 you can see that in these trees, like how white tip they all are. Yeah. Our first stop in West Yellowstone was a visit to the Grizzly and Wolf Discovery Center and get a closer and safer look at a grizzly bear. A few days back, traveling through Jackson Hole, we were very fortunate to see a mother grizzly nursing her cubs with our binoculars. But before we could break out the camera and zoom lens, the little family headed back into the woods. And that's a female. <laughs> this is spirit. Yeah.
And then there was this one exhibit that caught my interest. The display of Grizzly Bear food safe containers where size is not as important as the materials the containers are made out of. Well, sometimes size is important. <laughs> Our second stop was a high priority for Megan checking out the half dozen souvenir shops, looking for just the right pair of wool socks to keep her feet warm. And sure enough, she found a pair with the added bonus of having a fly fishing motif. Having met our objectives visiting West Yellowstone, we made our way back to Idaho to purchase fishing licenses and to check into a motel in Ashton for a few days, a location we chose that would give us access to several of the area's rivers and spectacular waterfalls. Traveling back into Idaho, you get a real sense for how fast the weather can change, going from sunny skies to snowy fog as we cross over the Targhee Pass at 7,000 feet in the Henry Lake Mountains of the Caribou Targhee National Forest. Welcome to Idaho. And please subscribe and join us on our journey as we fish the Harriman Ranch section of Henry's Fork of the Snake River on opening day and fish the Warm River, a true Idaho gem of a trout stream named after the cascading spring-fed water whose temperature remains consistent at 52 degrees throughout the year. A jumper. Nice rainbow, huh? Nope. No idea where he just went. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs>